Good evening, all. You are all welcome to tonight's special edition. I am very happy to welcome you. And again, my name is Pharmacist Chioma Okonko. Before we begin, I'd like to call for a short opening prayer. And I would ask Pharmacist Abdullahi Musa to please give us an opening prayer. Thank you, Pharmacist Abdullahi Musa. You can unmute yourself and say a quick prayer. Thank you. Okay, uh, good evening, all. Good evening. Good evening. Allah, hmm? May Allah open our hearts and the heart of the presenter to this session so that uh, the, the knowledge we will acquire today will put it into use for the upliftment of the society. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Before I proceed, I'll kindly appeal to us all to kindly mute ourselves. We are going to be muting ourselves during the course of this presentation so that we can avoid every form of interference. That way we can ensure that every person on this platform, on this Zoom call, can hear, can hear what is being said loud and clear. On that note, I want to recognize the presence of all SIPAN, very important personalities and major stakeholders present at this meeting. We recognize you in our midst. I also want to recognize the presence of all the fellows of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists and fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria present in our clinical presentation tonight. We recognize your presence with us. I also recognize the presence of all members of CPAN in diaspora present here tonight and yet to join us. You are highly welcome to this meeting. Permit me to also recognize our able and capable CPAN state coordinators here present. You are all beautifully welcome. Our CPAN board of trustees members present. You are highly welcome. Our council members, we love you, we appreciate you. We also welcome the national chairman. I call him my, he calls me his tomato juice. Our national chairman and our national secretary, she's already on this call. And all the executive members present here tonight. My tireless education committee chairman, Dr. Solomon, he's already here. Someone is saying she cannot hear. Please. I hope I am being heard. I need a confirmation. Can someone hear me? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. We are hearing, yes. you. hearing you. We are hearing okay. you. You are very clear. Okay. Okay. Yes, very clear. I hear you. Well done. Yes. Thank well, you very I'm much. Good. Thank you very, very much. So I welcome all the C my CIPAN national chairman, like I said, he calls me his tomato juice, and his every secretary and executive members present here tonight. 
our tireless education committee chairman and the lady beside him, the secretary, Dr. Regina. I am loyal, your girl is loyal. And I cannot forget our clinical pharmacists from all over Nigeria and beyond who are present in this meeting and who are attending for the first time. You are all welcome. Our flight is about to take off. So fasten your seat belts, make sure you eliminate all forms of distraction because we are about to cruise. Tonight's presentation promises to be wow. It's going to be a good one because we will be talking about the competitive advantage in pharmacy practice, clinical pharmacy knowledge and skills in focus. So you're going to arm yourself with clinical pharmacy knowledge and skills, and that will put you at an advantage in your pharmacy practice. And to dissect and do justice to this lovely, wonderful topic. We have a presenter. She is the founder and chief executive officer of Advantage Health Africa, which powers my pharmacy, my medicines, and my advantage. She was the former chief operating officer of the Tony Elumelu Foundation. She's a consultant for the financial institutions, so she knows everything about money. Okay, well, I don't know if we're going to be sharing money tonight, but I know my presenter is able and capable. She's, she has consulted for World Bank, and she's an alumina of the African Women Entrepreneurship Cooperative and Kador and Joseph Business School, Nigeria. She has, so, she has won so many awards, the JBS Global Entrepreneur of the Year, and then winner, making more health, and lots and lots and lots more. She is, of course, a beautiful lady pharmacist. And she is no other than pharmacist Mrs. Abimbola Adebakin. Ma, you are highly welcome and you have the floor. Thank you very much. Good evening, Francioma. Thank you so much. Good evening, my honorable colleagues. As men of honor, we join hands. I am very excited to be here with you, Sipan. I remember when it was formed and I have heard so many great things coming out from Sipan and I'm glad to be a guest today to speak with you. Thank you so much for having me. I see Professor Banjoku, Bola Joku, I know here, my lecturer while I was in school. Thank you very much, Ma. Taught me clinical pharmacy. I'm honored to be sharing some views that I have, in, you know, like in reverse. So thank you so much, Ma, for being part of the session tonight. I also, you know, um, acknowledge various colleagues that I know in person or we've been meeting remotely. I've been chatting with a few people, in fact, someone this night chatted with me and said, oh, I'm going to be at your session. So thank you for the honor of a full room. I will do two things. I will, as much as possible, share my views regarding pharmacy from a competitive advantage point of view. I am not an expert in clinical pharmacy, so I definitely cannot in any way teach you clinical pharmacy. You are the experts. What I want to do is take what you have in your hands and help you catalyze it and make it grow and make it expand and make it value adding. The second thing I hope to do is to leave you with action plans. So we're going to have a breakout room, maybe in about um, 30, 40 minutes. And then when we break out, you're all going to discuss certain things and then we'll come back, understand, agree, and you will take action from there on. So I'd like someone to time me. When it's about 40 minutes, please let me know. Uh, Pam Chum, are you going to be able to do that? Sure, I will. At your yeah, service, so. ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. So again, like I said, I'm honored to be here. And I will ask everyone to please put in the chat 
where you're joining us from. If it's Lagos, Nigeria, if it's Kigali, Rwanda, please chat, put it there. Where are you joining from? Where are you joining from? Good evening, ma. First I know, thank you, ma. So please quickly type it, quickly type it. I'm waiting. Where are you joining from? You're joining from Potakot, River State. You're joining from Lukuja. You're in Adamawa. I do. Okay, great. Someone is in Aba, Kaduna, Eboni. Great, great. Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you. Who else is in the room? I do Ekiti. Right. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Bauchi, Sokoto. Excellent. Abelkuta. Great. Plateau State, Gombe. I've been to Gumbi twice. I love, love, love going there then. Okay. I'm looking for a state I haven't been to. I think of all, I think it's just, it's only Sokoto I have never been to. All the other states I have been. A quiet one. Great, Kano. I did a job in Kano for almost a whole year. Going and coming, going and coming. All right, so lovely to meet you. Thank you all, thank you so much. I know you have high expectations, but um, we will meet you together. Once again, my name is Abimbola Adebakin. I will use a deck of slides to share my thoughts regarding competitive advantage in pharmacy practice. And the focus is on clinical pharmacy knowledge and skills. You all know your domain. Your domain is an interesting, important domain. I was in Cote d'Ivoire two weeks ago. I met with um, the like the equivalent of our own DG or PCN slash NAFDAQ. So they have only one agency. And we're having a chat, we're talking. Of course, naturally, I went to talk about online pharmacy and all of that. And you know, he mentioned casually that, oh, we don't have any B farm or BSC pharmacy. They're all clinical pharmacists. They all, they all have a doctorate. So they're all doctors, doctors of pharmacy. Because they kept calling me doctor, doctor. I said, I'm not a doctor. I have B farm. So they don't practice. Everybody in Cote d'Ivoire as a pharmacist is a clinical pharmacist. And I said, wow, 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 you know. Anyway, that's life. So, you know, you're, you're a treasured set of people. You're highly relevant to what is happening in pharmacy practice. When they say, you know, pharmacy practice, pharmacy practice, you are the pharmacy practitioners. And I say to myself, how can you take the value that you carry? Some of you carry it with awareness. Some of you carry it without awareness. I'm starting now at 922. So how can we take what you carry and use it as well? So someone says a car with engine, with wheels, uh, with body cannot move without fuel. Some people have taken that and said, all right, fuel does not necessarily have to be gasoline. It does not have to come from crude oil. Well, can come from batteries. So they've made electronic cars. However, they're still cars with wheels, with fuel or energy, and with the body. So whatever it is that you are carrying with you, whether it is gasoline or it is electricity, you're carrying energy. I want you to see your knowledge and your practice as energy. And energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. How can you take that energy that you have? Most of you are carrying it as potential energy. Many of you are carrying it around without converting it. You need a catalyst. You need a generator. You need something to spoil you, to move you from that point of potential energy to kinetic energy. Energy cannot be destroyed. Energy exists. It is everything we are now. How can you take that jewel in your heart? and make it such a distinguished gem out there that you are so relevant, you are such a dominant person in the space 
that we need to seek you out for certain things. And the way, when, when, I, when, I, when I went to school, I tried to further my education. I did almost six years in a doctoral, uh, in a doctoral degree course in corporate governance. By then I had left pharmacy for a long time. So I was on the journey of you know, building expertise in corporate governance and board leadership and so on and so forth. We took one course, one day, and it opened my eyes. You know, when you look at a big sphere and you look at the dots, that's the domain area. So my domain was around organizational behavior. And you look at the dots inside that space, and we're talking about organizational design. Then inside organizational design, you look for another dot inside. That is corporate governance. And then inside corporate governance, I was focused on board leadership. Inside board leadership, I was focused on board chairman. And if I had completed that degree, that course, completed it, I would have been the expert in the role of the board chairman in XYZ perspective. And so when the world is looking for that expert in that domain, in that area, in that area, they will look for one speck of dust, and that is you. Now, that dust, that speck is needed at a certain time in life, in career, in an organization's, in organization's development, in a nation's quagmire, or whatever. And then you stand up and you rise to the occasion and it is you that brings the solution. I watched the movie, there was a man, his expertise was that he studied post-war development in the US. He studied the Great Depression and something, and his expertise was needed during the financial global crisis of 2008, 2007, 2009. That was when his expertise became a global solution. I'm hoping that each one of you will know that you're sitting on certain things. You're sitting on energy where your expertise will be needed. Maybe it is around virology. Maybe it is around contagious, you know, infectious disease. Maybe it is around a particular stem or vertical in non-communicable diseases. Maybe it is around a demography, elderly. Maybe it is around elderly living in urban areas, maybe it is around glaucoma, whatever area, become such a big domain expert and do it in a practical way, not just for knowledge and you know insight, but for knowledge, insight and practice. That is what gives you a competitive advantage. My whole session today is to help you see that catalytic work you can do, to take advantage of the gaps that we have right now, to see how you can you know, demonstrate that superior performance over others. Not because you're in competition, but because that's what drives you, it fuels you, it energizes you. You know, you read stuff about it, you see miracles, you see things, you see inside, you become the authority. You know, you become the person with relevance in that dot, in that dot that is a sub dot of a sub dot of a domain area. I need that from you. Why? Because then you can stand shoulder to shoulder anywhere in the world. They bring an expert from Australia, they bring an expert from Israel, and they put you, all three of you can stand shoulder to shoulder with expertise, with relevance, because you are able to demonstrate superior performance. Gone are the days when you had to be in the West, maybe Europe, or you had to be in the Ameri North America, or you had to be, you know, rich, or you had to be, you know, uh, someone with 50 years ago. No, 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 no. Gone are those days. Something has happened in the world in the last 20 years that has changed and catalyzed opportunities such that you can be resident in the suburbs of Joss and be the global expert in an area and you will be sought after and they will find you because you are demonstrating competitive advantage. That is the world we live in. So I wanna ask you my first question and I want you to write down an answer. What is your competitive advantage as a clinical pharmacist? Giving you one minute to write it down. One minute and I'm, I'm gonna call one or two people just randomly, I'm gonna call you ask you to unmute and just tell me 
what is your competitive advantage as a clinical pharmacist? Or if somebody wants to volunteer and say, you know what, I figured this out, this is my competitive advantage. Please unmute and let me know. One person, two people. Hello, Ma. Can you hear me, Ma? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, this is from Chioma. Okay. What if I suggest that they drop it in the chat box? Would that yeah, be okay? Yeah, but I also you? like the interaction. They can drop it in the chat box, but I'm going to call two people to speak. I okay, hope they are able to speak. No, they can't speak. They will unmute themselves and speak, but it's just that we are looking at the time to make sure you finish this beautiful presentation you're going to give to us. Thank we you. don't want to... We don't um, want to miss any bit of it because of um, question. It's the interaction. Don't is worry. Partly. Okay, ma. Thank don't you, worry. ma. Just time me at 40 minutes. Thank you. Okay, ma. So I'm waiting for one person on mute. Let me go and do this. Hey, your mom, so I have to slap the chain. So someone says drug therapy problems with, I think you didn't complete that from Omolola. It's completed. What is your competitive advantage as a clinical pharmacist? Medication therapy management. Who else? Someone says I'm an expert my clinical pharmacy skills. I need a competitive advantage. We will, we will, we will look at it further. I need to know, you know, where, where your space is at right now. Farm Rosary. Can you unmute? From again. We can hear you. Where what is your competitive advantage as a clinical pharmacist? <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. My problem solving skills. Problem solving skills. Problem solving skills. Okay, so that's the perspective you have. Thank you very much. I'm asking this question because I need you, first of all, to all itemize what you see as a competitive advantage. And at the end of this session, I hope that we can then take a common view regarding competitive advantage. Amalara, yes, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, everybody. My competitive advantage where I am working in an outpatient clinic is drug therapy problems. I'm in a drug setting where the, the medical doctors are not used to a pharmacist bringing the attention to drug therapy problems. I'll give you an example. Okay. There was a day um, the medical doctor sent the patient to do a test, barium meal, to know whether she has ulcer. So he did the test and it was positive. And she was going to start the patient on medication. Now, when the prescription came to my office, knowing that the medical doctor was basing the prescription on the test the patient had gone to do, I started interrogating the patient before you went to take this, and um, before you went to do this test, did were you on so so and so medications? And the patient said yes. I went back to the doctor and told the doctor, patient want, was on so so and so medication that will give a false positive for this test you sent her to do. The test was not reliable. The doctor was dazed. She was like, eh, hey, really? I said yes. So because the patient is on this medication that will give a false positive, we are meant to give her a one-month washout period before she can do that test again. 
Yeah. So that's an instance. So that's excellent. Thank you. Which Thank you for me that a example. very good competitive advantage where I am. So whenever I go to see the doctor to talk on drug therapy problems, they know the authority is coming. She must have seen something wrong and they are Great. ready to listen. Great. So I won't be able to take any more hands now, but please write your answer in the chat. I, I needed two people to answer because it's important we contextualize this session. I don't want to come and just speak and we'll have a good time. When I, when I, when I engage in sessions like this, I know that you know, there's a gift to do this and I'm glad for it, but I don't want to just speak and then we'll have a good time and then we go. Today, December 16, 2022, I need you to take action starting from here. If you've been taking action before now, excellent. I love it. But if not, I need people to start taking action. In business, competitive advantage is such a serious matter we talk about it we do retreat about it we revise about it we spend money to identify what is my competitive advantage in comparison to others in my sector in my industry in my country in my continent we must identify it because that is what gives you fuel that's what gives you fuel on a daily basis now my second question if your sector or industry, right, can increase market share, and the pharmaceutical industry can increase market share. So it's not a question of if our sector can increase market share. It will have to be through competitive advantage over competitors. I'm not gonna go down the, you know, the whole around who are our competitors, but you and I know that whatever is taking anybody away from your expertise to rely on charlatans, to rely on the informal sector, to rely on the internet for insight, to rely on untrained or half-trained people, it is a competitor. Now, you must carry such value that it must be difficult for them to find you, so to speak, you the expert in others. It must be difficult. It must be difficult. In today's tech-driven and consumer-focused health ecosystem, my question is, how can you, as clinical pharmacists, how can you stand out such that they cannot easily replace you? How can you stand out such that they cannot easily replace you? It's not business as usual. It's not by doing the common things. It's not by setting up a shop or an office or having a website or by saying, oh, I'm on social media. What are you doing on social media? What are you, you know, presenting on social media? What is the domain that is a dot, inside a dot, inside a dot, that is your area that we can associate your name and that domain, you are like five and six. Those are the kind of questions I need you to ask yourself today. All right? Those are the kind of questions. I hear people, I hear someone, I've just read someone's chat, that the laws are against us. Please, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that, please. Don't do that. Let us focus on the things we can control. And I'll mention that briefly as we go along. In attaining competitive advantage, I beg of you, look at it. Now, when you want to explore the new horizon, look for improved patient care. Whatever your community advantage is achieving must be measurable. One is improved patient care. If it is not leading to improved patient care, hmm, you're probably just having a good time. It must lead to increased profits because this practice is also a business. It's a business. It is a business. I don't know how many times I need to say it for you to understand your practice is a business. Any business that is not returning profit is expenditure of energy without results. It must also improve professional outlook and brand image. You must be contributing to your village, you know, to who we are. I love it when I win awards 
I love it when I'm going out there and being celebrated because I am standing in the midst of many who are critical and who have turned themselves into cynics. And I'm saying, I am a pharmacist. I am adding to the brand image of pharmacists. Fourth, it must indeed increase scale. There must be scalability with what you are doing and it must be reproducible. It must be something that others can take a cue from and grow thereby. You must, you know, it must increase control. It must increase influence. I've been talking about influence all, our, all along. And I need you to be conscious that these things happen when you are intentional about it. It does not happen by chance. Look at mental health. Today it is said that one in four persons has a mental health issue. Just two days ago or so, a notable DJ across the world killed himself. He left a note. The day before, he posted a very hilarious, beautiful, happy video of himself dancing with his wife. What is happening in the world? And how are you a solutions provider? Mental health issues are plenty. I was filling a form for you know um, how to lose weight and all of that. They asked me, have you subscribed to any mental health platform? It's like it's mainstreamed. Yet, I don't see any pharmacist, clinical pharmacist or otherwise, who is practicing here in Nigeria and distinguishing himself or herself. If you are doing it, I don't know about it. Who knows about you? Who has heard about your expertise? Who has broken walls to come to reach you? These are broad benefits of navigating this new horizon that we see before us. And I need you to do it with intention. I need you to do it with, you know, with, with concern, with focus, with an awareness that you are this competitive advantage. This is your competitive advantage and you are carrying this CA. Are we together? If you are with me, please put yes in the chat. Yeah. Yes, Thank ma. You. Yes, ma. We are with you, ma. Great, great. Now, there are some areas that I have seen. Remember, I told you I'm not a clinical pharmacist, but I keep seeing people distinguishing themselves across the world. Areas like, you know, determining drug-related problems, Areas around legal rights to prescribe selected medication. People are preferring pharmaceutical care concepts. People are advising on healthy diets and they are hired in person in clinics or they are hired on apps. There's an app now that I've paid almost $200 to have. Which pharmacist is hired there? Advising on healthy diets and drug food interactions. I don't see any. They are running anti-coagulation monitoring classes or sessions. They are, of course, we do a lot of self-care consultation on minor ailments. We do that a lot. They are running community clinic services. And I know, I hear people say, our laws do not allow. I hear you, honestly, I do. But the laws did not allow when I started a pharmacy. Honestly, they didn't. But I went to meet the regulator. I need to see CPAN in the advocacy you do. I need to see you with a body of experts who you present to the regulator or regulators and make a convincing case, a convincing argument that in the face of things, we are clinical pharmacists. Our peers are doing this. How do you, you know, expect us to continue like this? We need to see a change in the next three years. Let them tell you what they need you to do to make that change happen. Do not accept when they say it cannot be done. It can be done. It can be done. So when we say the laws do not allow, that is now. By year 2028, they must allow. So what would we do between now and year 2028? And how do you position yourself with a competitive advantage to get there when it is now allowed for you to be the one that is thriving when it is allowed. Kinetic dosing services, these are services that you can render. This is, this is uncommon. These are things that they cannot easily replace you. A half-baked or informal person cannot provide it. 
specialized compounding services, weight management counts, all sorts of things. I have like five pages. So when you get these slides, please go and check these particular slides. There are one, two, three, four, yeah, four slides that reference areas of extended pharmacy services. And most of them represent clinical service, clinical pharmacy services, most of them. And you have comparables in countries like Australia, Canada, Japan, Hong Kong, UAE, Malaysia. You have countries like Sudan, Sudan, Nepal. You know how backward Nepal is? Nepal. So nobody should be able to argue with you. These are areas of extended pharmacy services that you should be involved. So I know, I know, I hear that the pharmacy law limits our practice. You know, we've not been given prescriber status. I hear you, but there are some countries that have it. So go and study. If you have to send a contingent to one or two of those countries and bring back the case, and the fight they had to fight, the struggle they had to struggle, and how they achieved that so that the landscape can allow you. But before the landscape allows you, before the ecosystem opens up for you, you need to show and demonstrate that you have that competitive advantage as individuals and as a collective. Right now, the business model we are operating is based on medication. Let me explain. If you go into a pharmacy, you see products before service. That business model does not promote competitive advantage of clinical pharmacy, no? Where products are jettisoned are above and beyond and celebrated above expertise. That business model is thwarted. It's like putting the cart before the horse. We need to replace with the business model where expertise that is relevant for patient care is the one that is in the forefront. You then use products to meet a need. It stops being about you pricing product. They now might look for service. So the business model we are used to over the past 50, 60 years is a business model that is not geared for pharmaceutical and clinical pharmacy competitive advantage. So it has to change. Who is going to build the cart? Who is going to change it? Some of you have to start. And in starting, there are quick wins and then there are long journeys. It requires a lot of continuing education and I love what you're doing. It requires even this change of the layout in your hospital pharmacy or in the clinical pharmacy. It requires a change. And it requires us to stand up and pay attention to our talent erosion that is happening all over the sector. Pharmacies, doctors, nurses, the West, the countries that speak English, are, they are scooping, scooping our experts. Now they're scooping teachers. Soon they will come and scoop our house helps. I just lost the pharmacy technician. She just sent me a message two days ago. Ma, I've just arrived in Canada. I'm like, well done, congratulations. Yeah, I even had to contribute money to her trip. So we're even contributing money to their trip. Abby, you can't avoid it. That's the reality. How can we stem this talent scarcity? We must find compelling solutions to address these five and more. So when someone tells me the law does not allow, I hear, I agree, it does not allow yet. You must put yet. I went to a West African country and they said, oh, I said, you know, one of the compelling reasons for you to open up for X, Y, Z is because you are losing people. They said, no. I said, what do you mean you're not losing? They said, no. Our people went and they are coming back. I'm like, wow. Yes, they said, yes. They are all coming back now into the country. They've gone and they're coming back. Yes, it's a small country, but they're experiencing a reversal. So when we keep saying we're losing, we're losing, we're saying it as though it's fait accompli, it cannot be reversed. It can. I don't know what we do. I don't have such reason, you know, explanations. But how are we preparing to stem the exodus or prepare for a reversal or manage even the situation we're in where virtual pharmacy consultation 
becomes a thing. It becomes accepted. It becomes a reality. We have call centers, not manned by customer service. The customer service people are pharmacies, rendering virtual pharmacy consultation, probably using phone lines that people pay a higher premium for. And so you get your money. There's no money exchange. The money is in the phone. So long as they're speaking with you for five minutes, your 2,000, 5,000 has clocked in. When that becomes a thing, who will be the people that will man the phones? Experts, people who have created a competitive advantage for themselves. So there's an area of concern. All of us are concerned about these things. There are bottlenecks, I understand. I'm not ignorant of them. I'm not unaware. But I'm saying, look for inside all this big area of concern, which one can we influence? Then when we find what we can influence, we now control it. So in shaping out and figuring out your competitive advantage as an individual and as a profession, a, sub, a subset of a profession, you must look for what you can control now. And what you can control now, find how to work the necessary steps to be able to control it in the near future. You must. There's an example we're doing now where we're looking at point of care tests. And we're saying, okay, point of care, point of care test. There are many pressures now. How can we get pharmacists to handle more? But in fact, at the time, we were speaking with two potential partners. One was saying, how can we make sure you know, the pharmacists have the care kits so that people can come in and buy, go and do come back to the pharmacy, or all sorts of things. And I was saying, can we conduct a survey so that we conducted the survey? There is pressure. People are looking for how pharmacists can be more relevant in point of care. But there are problems in that area. Appointment setting. Do we have a system and a mechanism for it? Pre-screening questions. You know, now if you speak to a, a mental health expert, they pre-screen you and then they know who to call for you and then the guide that you have and all of those things. Do we have pre-screening questions codified, understood, developed, for our Nigeria, in our own manner of speaking, that people will feel good to go along and sign up? Do we have patient intake forms? Do we have consent forms? Do we have resort communication modalities? Do we have a referral linkage or referral or linkage system to a facility? How many of such facilities have we signed on? Have we checked them? Have we verified them? Do we have an interface, maybe an API? that connects our software? Or if there's no software, do we have paper replacing? What do we have in place for this place we want to go to? What do we have in place? What do we have in place? Now, when we see problems with an area you want to go to, guess what? It becomes an opportunity, which you can solve individually or you can solve collectively. These are all areas that need attention for point of care tests to happen. That's what brings me to this point about where you can distinguish yourself. Some of you can say, you know what? I want a huge market area and my own will be low price, low price, cheap, you know, effective, cost effective and so on, beautiful. You want to be a cost leader. For cost leadership, there are certain things you need to do. And not too many people can play in cost leadership. You can't be the cheapest, and then another person be the cheapest. And you have many of you want to be the cheapest. There's usually one cost leader, and then others are, you know, wannabes. Somebody says, you know, my own is not general market. My own is a focused area. I want to create my competitive advantage amongst geriatric men. That's the area I want to focus on. In that area, my specialty is around, you know, uh, prostrate care. And then I will make it so affordable for them. Maybe they will pay a certain amount every month. They will even know it's coming out of their pockets. Uh, so you're, you're doing cost focus in a niche market. So one person says, you know what, my own is not about cost. I will charge good price. But my own will be, you know, a premium price, but a large market. or a specific market. Apple, for example, is for specific. Apple is not selling to everybody. They're not selling the iPhone to everybody. Bookboy is uh, 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 Android. Apple, niche. 
But in the niche, they are high priced. I need you to start thinking like that. Some of us want to play all around. You will exhaust yourself. You will exhaust yourself. You can't be cost leader, differentiator, mass market, niche market. You will exhaust yourself. You will kill yourself. You will die. You will die. You will explode. In building this sustainable competitive advantage as a clinical pharmacist, you must satisfy marketplace desire. So find what people are looking for, what people are desirous of. Do they want to speak with someone? Do they want a note from someone? Do they want someone who calls them? Do they want technology? Do they not want technology? What do they want? Find out. And then what are they able to pay for? Which one is hard to substitute? You must find it. You must do the work. That's what I mean by being intentional. Now, if you are someone that says, okay, my own, ex my own competitive advantage is drug, drug interactions and the problems that come with it. Beautiful. How many people are interested in drug, drug interaction? Uh, a thousand people. Who are they? Doctors. Then you focus on doctors. We want to focus on patients. We want to focus on which one? Who is going to pay you for your expertise? must be difficult for competitors to acquire it or imitate it. If they have to acquire it, they must buy you out or include you and be paying you a retainership. And it must offer value to customers. I'm gonna move very quickly now. So build up all your capabilities, build up all your skills, build up all your lessons learned over your 30 years, your 15 years, where you have rolled up your sleeves, experience that nobody can take away from you, experience that is not common. Make it into a core competence, then design it around a sustainable competitive advantage. I'm using these words because I know you understand them. But sustainable means it is running profitably and it is not that you have to go and look for money to keep at it. It can pay for itself and give you profit then you have superior value for customers. Some of you, you may need to design a product. Some of you, it is customer intimacy that is your competitive advantage. It's just a way that people learn to trust you. It's the way you send message that you know, it gets to them and they can relate to it. For some of you, it is the efficiency and the effectiveness of your method. They sign on, in five minutes, they've logged in. In 20 minutes, somebody has seen them. In 30 minutes, their prescription is ready. In, in, in one hour, everything is done. Pa, pa, pa. You've created a system, a process that the service you are rendering, that expertise in clinical pharmacy is so efficient that they recognize I'll pay for high efficiency. For some people, they'll pay for the customer intimacy. For some people, it's the product. You can't get this product anywhere. Try to stay in one box, maximum two boxes. You cannot be operationally excellent and also do custom. Sometimes one will give to the other, okay? And build your knowledge. These days are the days of knowledge economy. What do you have sound knowledge about? If you don't have it already, give yourself a time. Say, over well, the next two years, I am going to acquire some knowledge in this area of ophthalmics. So that any medication, if they are talking about a artificially in, artificial intelligence enabled eye drops, they will come to me because I am the expert. Find that area. Then what do you, what are you an expert in so that people have positive testimonials? Some of us are not even cultivating the testimonials. We're not capturing them. You must put these testimonials somewhere. You must begin to tell stories around them without shaming and without revealing in a way that people can recognize, ah, she's the expert too. As a Dr. May on, on Instagram, she's the expert in mental health that she's one that everybody refers to. She writes stories about herself, her family, and so on. But when issues come up, she's the one that addresses it. What certification do you have or will you acquire? Because some people admire certification. I say combine all three, knowledge, expertise, certification. Then monetize your knowledge. And there's a way you can do it. You call an expert. Look, this is who I am. This is what I have. I've been sitting on it for too long. How can we package this so that it is so attractive? How many of you are on social media and you go and you meet, ask them, damn, damn. 
she charges hundreds of thousands of naira for people to lose weight. And I'm saying, I, I lose weight. This is not calorie deficit. It's less than what you are con what you are burning. You will lose weight. Give yourself nine months or twelve months or so, so or you want to do shinkani and give yourself three weeks. She's charging hundreds of thousands. How many of you in your domain can charge hundreds of thousands for someone to sit and sign up with you for three months to achieve a health goal? Leverage social media and then embrace collaboration. You can embrace the collaboration because technology is so central to how we live now. It is how health is accessed. So plan. When I have this expertise, this knowledge, this domain area that I am the one, and then this certification, how do I get forward? And so we're going to break out into three breakout rooms now. You'll be assigned automatically. Pam Chama, this is like 40 minutes, right? Yes, I already told you when it was 30 minutes. Okay, so this is like 40 minutes. This so is exactly 40 minutes. To... Okay, beautiful. So in your groups, you're gonna be in three groups. In your groups, you are going to answer these questions. Please write them down. What are your top 10 cases in the pharmacy right now? Hospital pharmacy, um, uh, community pharmacy, wherever you practice. What are your patient categories? What are you skilled at? Please discuss amongst yourselves because somebody is going to represent you and say, speak on behalf of you as a group, as though you are one. So if all of you are saying, oh, I'm skilled at diabetic management, I'm skilled at it, and then you find that all your cases are hypertension. It's not relevant. So align your thoughts so that the person will now come and say, okay, when we discussed, we saw that these are top 10 cases. And what are your patient categories? You say them. They are women of so so so, uh, and so you use a demographic factor. Maybe they are rich, they're poor, maybe they are old, they're young, whatever, maybe they are overweight, they're thin, whatever. Then what are you skilled at? And what skills do you need? Then what are the emerging global trends in the management of a just pick one clinical condition and how can you optimize the care? of your patients. Is this clear? You will discuss it and one person will come out and talk to us. So I'm gonna create, so let me stop sharing. Just a moment, um, Dr. Madhu, Dr. Madhu. Yes, I, I'm with you, good evening. Good evening, my chair, my Chairman, Kum, President, Kum, all of them for CPAN. So hey, please, no I need meal. you. No, no. no I need you to. No, no, no. I said for CPAN. I did say for okay. TSN. <laughs> okay. So, sir, please, I need you to come in at this time and maybe um, how do we go about this breakout session, sir? Please. I'm about to do it, madam. I have the right to do it. Yes, ma. No. I'm not saying you should not do it. I want to take permission no, I mean, from my oh okay. All right, sorry. From Go my ahead. chairman to to tell me what to direct me. Let me put it that way. On Dr. How Madu, to... You know this you type of not... presentations. No, no, not on not not on how to. I understand what pharmacist um our presenter is saying, but what I want to ask you, Dr. Madu, you know, we're not used to these types of presentations where we do breakout sessions. So I want to know how we're going to do it such that in 30 minutes, we are wrapping up. All right. Are you still with me? Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. All right, we are not used to this. Just like what Madame was saying in her presentation, we may say we don't have the loss, this and that, but yet. She said, but yet. So she's there yes. this night. Let's yes, her direct us on what we can do that. Okay, okay. Please, Ma, you have the floor, Ma. Present her, Ma. Okay, everyone. So I'm gonna break you into three groups. Please accept and quickly join. 
You will come back in five minutes. Five minutes. So quickly join now. You will see a prompter, just accept and you will be taken to those rooms. Accept and quickly join, accept and join. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. 
Hello, ma. I don't know yeah, how I got okay. signed out. Yes, ma. I got uh, signed out. I was in room one. Oh. I was okay. in room one, ma. I don't I'm know how. I'm assigning you again. I'm assigning okay. you again. Thank you, ma. Yes. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Great. Thank you. I know, I know I choked you of time, but I needed <laughs> you to focus. I know, I know. I know. I understand what Famchoma was. It's not bad. what Famchoma was worried about. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Because once you get people talking, they don't want to come back. So that's why I said I have the access rights. I close the groups and I don't want it. So for time, because I don't want to disrespect the time limit, I will call on just one group. And then all of you can take action from there. So which group is ready with a representative to speak about this task you just did? Anyone? Group one is ready. Beautiful. Go ahead, sir. Unmute yourself, show your video, and let's talk about what you discussed. We have our representative. She will talk now. 
Go ahead, your representative. Good evening, all. Hello, Good fam. evening, dear. Good evening. Yes, are you with me? Go ahead. We came, yes. Um, we this first question was what are your top cases, 10 cases in the pharmacy? So you basically discuss on the top cases are number one, cancer cases. For example, breast, colorectal. Then we also say another in diabetic cases, hypertensive cases, malaria. I sh then for the second question, what are your patient categories? Patients are elderly. They are basically more of females. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you clearly. Elderly yes. females. Yes, elderly, they are females. They are poor. They don't have the finances to take care of themselves. ETC, then what are you skilled at? Um, we are skilled at managing the adverse drug reaction, you know, basically, especially for the cancer patients, they came with a... We are also skilled at uh, reconstruction of cytotoxics. Then skills needed. We need more skills pharmaceutical and counseling. We need more skills in counseling. Okay. Yes. Go on. In global trends in the management of certain clinical condition. We discuss about collaborative care. To our own understanding is where the patient is at the center, the base uh, come and discuss about the issues of the patient. So collaborative care is very important, especially yeah. practice. Okay. Then how can you optimize the care of your patients? We said through monitoring of responses, but this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's all, ma. Okay, excellent. You see, this exercise that I just forced you to quickly do, you need to do it individually. You need to come up with top cases you are seeing. That will inform you which area you must specialize in. You need to understand the, the, the context of your clients. What is their category? What are they worried about? Are they middle age? Are they young? Are they children? Are they elderly? What are you skilled at giving right now? Start with that, because that's your low-hanging fruit. Then go and acquire what you need that you have identified will still give value to these people. Then find out, come, I am acquiring all these things. What are my contemporaries doing? Global trends. Then based on that, how can you optimize care and monetize it and make it sweet? Make it distinguished, make it attractive, package it as if you are packaging sweets or you are packaging shoes. Package your service, brand yourself as the expert that understands children, cancer in the elderly, females who knows how to manage their adverse drug reactions, who can reconstitute for them, who is able to counsel them because you have get, gotten certification in one-on-one -on -one counseling or group counseling, and you have understood this global trend. In fact, you are a member of so, so so Association that was formed by so 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 and this is what you are offering. Six sessions with me will cost you X, Y, Z. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? I know I'm saying it in a simple way, but quite honestly, it is simple. It is simple. I just need you to get up. I need you to get up. The pharmaceutical industry we're in is a big industry and it is growing. It has not reached its peak. It is a growing industry. Of this 3.6 billion that it will attract, which one is coming into your own pocket? Of this amount, what is coming into your pocket? We have been too focused on commodity. Commodity, the, the value of commodity is like half 
of the value of service. 3.6 billion for commodities, that's drugs. Now imagine another 3.6 billion for services. Which one will come to you? So I need you to come up, rise up. There is a place for you. Your clinical pharmacies own that space. You might have the idea in your head, but that's not where we're going. Where we're going is where you act on the idea. You choose, you focus. You are focused, like laser focused on your area. You keep trying and then you do it together. You're encouraging yourselves. You're encouraging yourselves. You keep learning. You keep growing together. That is how we can distinguish ourselves and creatively become the asset, the gem, the carrier of solutions in our industry. I said all that. We are also practicing what I'm saying. At Advantage Health Africa, we have my medicines focused on last mile. In fact, it's now last meter delivery of medication. So wherever you are, there's no excuse for you not to comply with your medication. We have a tribe that we have created. We've created three communities for young pharmacies under PLSP, for pharmacies under pharmacy owners and managers under my pharmacy growth hub, and for people who are taking our medication insurance under a group called my, my uh, tribe. We have my pharmacy, we have my advantage, we have advantage pharma. This is us distinguishing ourselves in the marketplace. This is our competitive advantage. We add network with technology and all sorts of solutions and services. That's how AHA creates its own advantage. Next time, next thing you will hear from us again is we will release the software. We're introducing the advantage PMS because we are seeing gaps in what is existing now in the marketplace for pharmacies and want to accelerate growth. That's me representing what I've just taught you. So I'm not a teacher that doesn't practice. I practice what I preach and I urge you today to do the same. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bravo. Wow, 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 wow. Wonderful session. I don't know. I do not know how you did this, but wow. Please, oh, mute yourself. Thank God, so. thank God I joined this meeting. Oh. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. much. Wow, we are coming in box, so. <laughs> thank you so much, Ma. Please, let's go back to muting ourselves. I know, I know yes. this lecture, I know this lecture has taken all of us. It has, it has carried us up, 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 up. It has thrown us up, up, up to start thinking. In fact, this question section, these few questions you asked us made a lot of us think, 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 think. And now you've even told us why the questions were asked. So those of us who were not thinking before now, I'm very sure that, okay, someone said first class lecture. Thank you so much. You. I, I do not know how to appreciate it. In fact, I am happy. I am moderating today because you can see I have mm -hmm. the floor, but I won't talk for too long ago because there are people, I don't know, are there questions? Please raise your hand or drop your questions in the chat box because as I'm looking at this time, we have 10 minutes max to round up. So while, I'm, while our national chairman is making his comment, if you have questions, please kindly drop it on the chat box so that she can pick it up from there. Yes, her slides will be forwarded to the participants. Dr. Madhu, please, you have the stage. All right, good evening once more. Please, am I audible enough? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, let me thank our ever radiating sister pharmacist. Mm -hmm. Abimbola, I saw her one time on CNN. So we have a mm -hmm. CNN uh, person on CPAM platform tonight. Is uh, I think mm -hmm. it's something great. We are highly honored, ma. Thank you for coming. You. I didn't expect less than this. In fact, you met or you met it beyond my expectations, and you have a really uh, a kind of uh, stimulated something within us. You also told us something in the beginning when you were in Cote d'Ivoire 
everybody was calling you doctor. I will plead uh, one thing with you. You said you are not a clinical pharmacist. Please, you should yeah. join CIPAN. Yes, I want you to be a <laughs> member of CIPAN. Every pharmacist can join CIPAN. With a B farm, you can join CIPAN at least as an associate member. And let us take pharmacy to a better uh, level in Nigeria. Like you said, I learned something today, uh, having heard that all pharmacists in, in Cote d'Ivoire are dressed as doctors. And that is what we tell our yes. colleagues here, that even with B farm, you can be addressed as doctor. You don't need to have farm D because I'm also aware that in Uganda and in Kenya, all pharmacies, including those with B farm, are also addressed as doctors. And this is why we most of the time we prefer using the terminologies medical doctors or physicians instead of using the word doctor. We don't want any MA to come again and say other people should not use the title. So I thank you so much, Ma. You have thrown a lot of challenge to. CIPAN members tonight, and I know that CIPAN was basically set to improve pharmacy practice in Nigeria, and all of us as stakeholders. CIPAN is exactly like American College of Clinical Pharmacy, which is just an association of pharmacists in America. And um, today we know that PharmD started more than, uh, let me say, up to almost 50 years ago, in the US, but um, American College of Clinical Pharmacy does not have all American pharmacists in, in the ACCP. And so is CIPAN too. Every pharmacist in Nigeria, including the clinical pharmacists, will not be a member of CIPAN. Only those who understand what it is to be a member, you are saying sometimes we should be proud of the association we belong to. And this is what we have always tried to market. When you say you are a member of CIPAN somewhere, it's prestigious and people should uh, have a kind of, ah, this person is a CIPAN member. That means you must know this and that. So you have thrown a lot of challenge to us tonight. How do we do these things? How do we package what we do? How to package it like sweets so that people would like to buy. But the most importantly, when I thought of inviting you, I always remember what Peter Drucker said. Sorry, am I still audible? Yes, sir, you are, sir. Yes, you are. Yes, my dear. So Peter Drucker said that knowledge is a waste if it is not put into end products or uses. And sometimes I ask myself, all this knowledge we gather in Sipan, if we don't put them into uses, then it's of, of no use, especially... Uh, Monetary value, our presenter has been talking about monetizing. You can't just have all the knowledge there and you're not using it. So you need to take action and put the knowledge into action. I think that is what she has kicked up in our spirits tonight. And uh, some time ago, Mrs. Lawal also spoke on something like this, improving re revenue generation in pharmacy, because I don't want somebody to say, I'm a clinical pharmacist and you retire poor. That is not nice with all these night lectures we have every night and everything. If they come to our pharmacies, the difference should be manifesting. And so, um, Dr. Mrs. Debakin Abimbola, <laughs> I will still want to, yes, you are a doctor, you are a doctor. Please, I will still want you to join CIPAN, please, and help us together. You are doing so much great work my CNN um, personality. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Chairman, sir. It seems my, your presentation was so good that questions are not coming. Have you looked at the chat box? <laughs> Everybody is doing wow, ow, ow, wow. Oh, ew, wow. So mm. means tonight's presentation was lovely. Honestly, we cannot thank you enough again. And okay, hands are still coming up. Dr. Danjuma Baba, you have one minute, sir. Please, unmute yourself and speak, sir. Thank you. Uh, ah. uh, it's actually a, a, stimul a stimulating session. I you know early this year, around the Tahiri Hotel, you remember? Tahir Hotel in, in Kaduna? In Kano. 
in yeah. Canada. Okay. And, uh, I, I, uh, we've agreed on the area that I just want to lay emphasis on is this area of saying because to uh, some of our laws that is uh, limiting us in some areas of practice. Tonight we've been able to open our eyes because this is one aspect. And uh, last week there was this uh, National Council on Health, and I presented a memo. And I, it was my, it was actually my first time for being at the National Council on Health. This is where every laws, or every policy, everything regarding practice or professional practice, had to do anything is at that level that is being done. And I understand that our colleagues, them, if they are there, they don't push for anything. But I believe with what you are encouraging what tonight, ensure that some of these laws that we, we, we are thinking that is not feasible for us to be to bring it down to our level to, for, to enable will be a thing of the past. Because what we see happening elsewhere, and if you go to you just go to your uh, some of your search engines, you see that there are so many works being done elsewhere. And why those, those practitioners who are given the mandate to also practice their profession the way they are trained, then the same thing should be applicable here. But here we are just, yeah. just lagging behind area in so many system development. And I'm also a, a clinical pharmacist. And I believe that with what you have told us tonight, with this your encouraging something. Is, is done. Thank you once again for for the. I thank you, Dr. Danjuma. Thank you, Dr. Danjuma. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Danjuma. You spent more than one minute, but you have been pardoned, Dr. Motehat Olulawa. One minute, ma. <laughs> Good evening, Madreto. Thank you so far, uh, ma. Thank you for tonight. I'm particularly grateful. I attended this session. In fact, it has been a yeah, high hope now. I usually ask, I said, what if what would happen if medications are taken away from us? Okay, let's say you are working in the hospital, for instance, there are some drugs that definitely should be hoes, but all, all we do is it just to write the hoes. Won't there be something else we can do beyond medications? I've always been like, as a professional, we must be more than this commodity. I once worked in a government house clinic whereby if they are following the ambulance, they would just say, okay, pharmacist. Give the drug to the nurse, let the nurse and the doctor for it's all like why is it that it is so easy to give our work to other people to do? I asked them, can you ask me yeah. to stand in place of the nurse? No, I won't give it away. I will have to go there myself. If we can have high opening sessions such as this, then we will be relevant, even without drugs. I want us to get to a situation where you don't have to I'm putting sell in quotes now, sell drugs for you to be reimbursed. There must be a way of packaging our service. And tonight you have opened our eyes to all these things. Every charlatan, they are selling drugs everywhere. We must be above that. It must be difficult, almost impossible to replace us. Madam, thank you so much for tonight. I will be coming in box. Expect us. And we are expecting uh, you to Sipan, ma. Thank you, ma. Charge you. Yeah. I will charge you for myself. No problem, ma. We will pay. We will thank pay. You very much. <laughs> Right, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have gradually come to the end of tonight's presentation. Me, I don't want this presentation to end. Though. Again, looking through the participants, we still have Dr. John Watwego online. We have Dr. Maureen Wafo. I'm still seeing Dr. Falashade Lawa, Dr. Dupe Oyawole, and so many others that I can't even call. They are so plenty. And then Somebody from my Ebony state, Nonyalum Tun Karibu. I am really impressed. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to call on, I'm going to call on someone to give us a nice closing prayer. I cannot see Dr. Aina anymore. She was with okay. Dr. Bola Joko Aina, please, Ma, please, Ma, can you kindly give us a closing prayer, Ma? 
Thank you. Ah, is she still there? Okay, yes. Professor Ayano. Oh, Professor Ayano, thank you, ma. Yes, I'm asking, can you hear me, please? Yes, so ma. Run... I can hear you. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. But I, we thank you for what you Seems her network is bad. Ma, we cannot hear you. Even as a teacher, I have something to take back to the classroom. Father, we thank you. As I continue to bless your daughter that you have been, and you continue to bless us all. As this uh, Christmas is coming close, Father, Lord, you preserve our life in the mighty name of Jesus. At the end of the day, it will be our portion for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, everyone. God bless us Amen. all. Amen. Okay. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you for all. Thank you, ma'am.